dominance, if you've ever wanted to get into the mind of a subtype to better understand the submissive experience, this is your chance because today I'm giving you radical insight into fostering the growth submissives really want to experience in themselves, their submission, and the dynamic as a whole. But before we jump into it today, let's quickly recap the content we covered last week when we contrasted the stereotypically aggressive and cold dominant with the caring dominant that submissives really want. First, there is no set style of domination. Just like you can choose whatever combinations of kinky delights you personally enjoy at the kinky buffet, your style of domination is no different and care is actually a fundamental aspect of domination, represented in roles such as soft dom, daddy dom, mommy dom, and caregiver. But I've found that one of the biggest obstacles to showing care is a lack of emotional intelligence. So to increase your level of emotional intelligence, presence and empathy are the perfect places to start. Remember, Emotional intelligence honors the emotional experience of the other more than a desire to prove one's power, show off one's skill, or substantiate one's superiority. But today, we're moving on to the next skill that will make you a high demand dominant. And that is the ability to help your submissive grow personally and as a submissive within the dynamic. Because despite the narrative of the sex crazed dominant and a submissive constantly on the brink of orgasm, growth was the second most popular answer I received when I asked my community the question, what makes a good dominant to you? Growth. Submissives want to be taught. They want to be trained. They want to be molded into the image desired by the dominant. All too often, however, dominants shy away from this aspect of their role because they're afraid of being the controlling, narcissistic abuser dressed in a dominant suit. Have you ever been in your head about that? Has that ever been a concern for you? Because I hear that so often from my dominant coaching clients. But here's the thing you need to understand, dominance. In a consensual power exchange dynamic, the submissive beneath this intimidated, apathetic, or complacent dominant, and I know those are strong words, but at the root, that's really what's happening here. And the submissive underneath, underneath the leadership of this dominant is often bitter and bored because they're not receiving the leadership they crave. In fact, this was a huge element of the toxic side of bratting we discussed in my latest series. So check out the link in this video's description to catch that video for a deeper dive into this particular submissive response. Because developing those under your authority is a key element of effective leadership. And this is what submissives crave on a fundamental level. Remember those global birthday parties we had as kids? Black lights, disco balls, popcorn and popular music, and the quintessential element, the bumpers on the bowling lanes. What were they there for? Other than to prevent a group of hormonal kids from getting discouraged and destructive, <laughs> what were they there for? To direct the ball when it got off track from the target. Now the submissive in this analogy is not the kid rolling the ball. It's not the kid rolling the ball down the lane. The submissive is the ball. Life is the kid rolling the ball down the lane. And when the submissive is being tossed around by life, there is great comfort and assurance to be had in knowing you're still being led along a path, boop, back on track, boop, back on track. You're still being led along the path that will get you to the intended target. 
the dominance, the submissive wants you to say no when they aren't strong enough to say no for themselves. They want you to set boundaries to help them be their best version. The submissive wants you to challenge them dominance. They want you to push their soft limits and help them expand themselves. They want you to prioritize their needs over their desires. They want all of these things. They crave all of these things. They do not consider these behaviors to be controlling. They consider this, what I just described, to be effective domination, which will encourage them to surrender to your leadership. That's why domination is not just about sex or kinky play. It absolutely, those are big factors, but it's not just about sex or kinky play. Domination is what allows the sex or kinky play to happen. Mm, I'm going to say that again. Domination is not just about sex or kinky play. Domination is what allows sex or kinky play to happen. And it's somewhat controversial, but I believe the necessary aspect of inspiring more growth from a submissive includes the element of challenge. The goals you set for your submissive shouldn't be so easy that they can be done mindlessly. The goals you set for your submissive should require their focus, their diligence, their humility, and their expansion. Your submissive should feel pushed. They should feel stretched. They should feel like something is being required of them because something should be required of them. That positive energy drain, that mental fatigue, that emotional strain, the requirement to choose between what they want now and what they want most. What sounds good to them right now or the look of pride and joy on their dominant's face at their obedience. That is the true masochism, the true pain point of submission that must be embraced in order to effectively serve. So dominance, don't be lenient when it comes to your rules, rituals, and protocols. You do not want to choose rules, rituals, and protocols that are unnecessary busy work because I personally believe that it dishonors the submissive service as well as downgrades your opportunity for domination. You also don't want to choose rules, rituals, and protocols that fail to require mindfulness, attention, and consistency from the submissive. Choose specific goals and structure your rules, rituals, and protocols with the four previous traits in mind. Focus, diligence, humility, and expansion. Will this goal, will this rule, will this ritual, will this protocol demand my submissive's attention and focus? Will this require my submissive to adhere consistently and diligently despite contradictory desires in the moment? Will this force my submissive to confront their humanity and deepen their humility? And will mental, emotional, relational, sexual, and spiritual expansion be required of my submissive in order to achieve this? That is the quality of rules, rituals, and protocols you want to establish. Because it is in this standard of demand that the quality of the submissive's character is formed. But this is just the first step. In my new High Demand Dominant Bundle, I have four more practical action steps that will teach you how to lead your submissive into profound personal development that will foster deep devotion. Just go over to patreon.com slash alexerotica to get instant access to this amazing new resource. And be sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on so you won't miss next week's video where I'm demonstrating how to guide your submissive without crossing the line into toxic control. Mm -hmm.